Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 16 of my Learn to Program series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to continue learning about regular expressions. And if you haven't watched the previous parts of the tutorial, I provide a link here in the video to watch those. Otherwise, you may be confused. Also, in the description underneath the video, you will find a transcript of this video as well as a cheat sheet. You should definitely refer to that to help you learn, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so on this page you'll see every single thing we learned in the last part of the tutorial. Right here we learned how to search to see if the regular expression we're searching for is found in our string and this returns either true or false, meaning search returns true or false. We also found, of course, you're going to need to import your regular expression module, and if you do, you're going to be able to use find all, which is going to return a list of all the matches for your regular expression. You can then use length to find out how many matches you got. You're going to be able to use compile then also to be able to create a pattern object that's going to provide a whole bunch of methods, such as you see right here, with substitute, which is going to substitute whatever you put here inside of this string right here. And then you have all of these other guys, which we'll also be reviewing in this part of the tutorial. So you could pause that and look at it as a cheat sheet, or of course it's in the description. So now what we're going to do is go in and start creating some new stuff. Okay, to keep everything simple, I am going to use use the same sort of format here and what I want to cover here first is how we match zero or one of a specific thing you're searching for. So let's say that we have a string and it has cat and cats inside of it and we want to be able to match for cat as well as cats. So we're going to create our regular expression here and we can compile this and then we can put in all of the letters that we want to be able to match for so that's going to be C, A, and T. Of course they don't need to be in that order. We're then going to follow that up with a plus which means that we want to match for one or more of anything that proceeds or anything that is inside of the square brackets. And then the new tool we're going to have is the S followed by the question mark. And the question mark is going to match for 0 or 1 of whatever precedes it. So that's going to allow us to match for cat as well as cats. We can then come in here and find all of our matches with find all. Throw our regular expression and the string that we want to work with. And then we can output all of our results. So for I in matches and then print those results out on the screen. And if we run it, you're gonna see that it matches for cat as well as cats. And it also is not grabbing the extra space right here whenever we are grabbing cat, so that's quite useful. So through the use of the question mark, we're able to match for zero or a one of whatever precedes it. And now let's see how we can match for zero or more. That guy is going to be the asterisk or the star or the multiplication symbol or whatever you want. So let's say we have doctor and doctors and doctors. And we want to match for that, doctors. There we go. So what's the regular expression going to be for this? I often come in here and just match for doctor. I have two O's in there, not needed, but I just think it makes it a little bit more readable and that's why I do that. Then going to put the plus sign in there, which is going to match for one or more of anything inside of the square brackets. Then inside of it, I want to match for the apostrophe as well as the S. And then I'm going to follow that up with the asterisk symbol, and that's going to match for zero or more of what's inside of there. And we can run this, and we can see right here that we were able to match for doctor, doctors, as well as doctors. And it, once again, we're not grabbing any extra spaces, which is quite useful. And now, based off of everything we learned here, I think we should jump in and do a problem. Now, I have talked about previously on Windows how new lines are sometimes going to be represented with a backslash N, and other times they are going to be set up to work with backslash R followed by a backslash N. So what I want to do here is, or what I want you to do here to solve this problem, is for you to create a regular expression that's going to grab each of the lines in a string. So let's go in and define that string. Just have it be random string again. However, this time I am going to use the multi-line strings. And then inside of it, I'm going to put just some words. And by default, the new line, meaning this guy is going to show up at the end of this guy right here. Then on the next line, I'm going to say and some 
more followed with a backslash R. Once again, the new line is there because I'm going to hit new line like that. And then I'm going to have more. So what I want you to do is create a regular expression that's going to grab each of those lines in this string. And then on top of that, print out the number of matches on each line, as well as output your results. So pause your video and give that a try. Otherwise, I'm going to solve it right now. Okay, most of the code here is going to be exactly the same. All I'm going to change here is the regular expression I'm searching for. And what I'm going to look here for is I wanted to be able to match for any of the letters or numbers that could possibly be inside of here. Also, I'm going to search for spaces. Then after that, I'm going to put a plus sign inside of here, which is going to match for one or more of anything that precedes that. I am then potentially going to have a backslash R. So in that situation, I'm going to put a question mark, meaning that there is going to be zero or one of those for my matches. And then I'm going to follow that up with a backslash N, which I know is always going to be there. So that is the regular expression you should have typed in. And if we run it, you're going to see that I got just some words and some more and more. So there you go. Hopefully you got that right. If you didn't, don't worry about it. We're learning here and that's part of the learning process. So now I want to go in and talk about something that some people find very confusing, which is the difference between greedy and lazy matching. All right, so we're going to create another string inside of here. And this guy is going to have some tags around it, XML tags. So let's say we have life on Mars. A TV show that I watched a long time ago and let's go and say that we have another one and this one's going to be freaks and geeks another TV show what I want to do is I want to grab everything that lies at the start of the name tag and the end of the name tag okay so based off of what we know so far this is probably how you think you would be able to come in there and grab these name tags you would type in name and then you're going to have your closing name bracket and then in between it you're going to think well we're going to get an individual character and then we're going to put a star inside of here and that star is going to match either zero or more possible characters you have inside of there so let's run this and so let's see what our results are and you can see our results are not good the reason why is it went in here and it grabbed both of the tags. And the reason it did that is because the asterisk character is what we call greedy, meaning it grabs the biggest match possible versus grabbing the first match. And by biggest match, well, we're looking for name and we're looking for an ending of the closing name bracket. So it grabs this whole entire thing. Meanwhile, we just want to grab this thing right here. So what do we do? Well, we go in and we make it lazy. And how we make it lazy is just by simply putting a question mark inside of it. And by doing so, you're saying that you want to grab the smallest match possible. And if we run it, you're going to see that yes, indeed, it all comes out perfectly. And even better yet, if you just wanted to get the names, you could do something with sub expressions, which we'll talk about here in a moment, which is going to grab just the names. So pretty cool stuff. And whenever you want to grab the smallest versus the largest possible match, this is going to work not only with the asterisks, but you're also going to be able to have this work whenever you're using the plus sign. And also you're going to be able to use the curly brackets. Let's say you did something like N like that. You could also use the question mark there. So that's something for you to practice around with. And that is the difference between lazy, which means grab the smallest match possible, and greedy, which means grab the largest match possible. Okay, so hopefully I cleared that up. Now let's jump over and talk about word boundaries. Now we're going to use word boundaries to define where our matches both start as well as end. And a little guy with a backslash B is going to match the start as well as the end of a word. So let's come in here and let's create our string. So at the apex, ape at the apex and let's demonstrate this regular expression. Here we are going to use a raw string and we're going to say that we want to match for ape. And let's run this and let's see what we get as a result. Well, we get ape 
and we get ape here but what we want to do is we're trying to grab only the ape word and not just the beginning of the word apex and word boundaries are going to allow us to do that and to set the word boundary all we have to do is come in here and put a backslash b to define the boundary and a backslash b to define the end of the boundary and if we do that we're going to see that we only come back with one result which is the target that we are looking for and why don't we come in here also and print out the number of matches that we get just so that we can have a little bit of additional information there you can see that we only had one and that is quite simply as easy as it is to define the boundaries for the regular expressions you are looking for so now let's take a look at string boundaries. Now for string boundaries, you're going to have two different tags. If you want to match the beginning of a string, you are just going to use the caret symbol like we had before. So we'll say beginning of string. And then you're also going to have another string boundary, which is going to be the dollar sign. And this is going to be the end of the string. Okay, so let's come in here and let's demonstrate exactly how we can use those with our little problems that we have. So let's come in and we have a string and we'll say something like match everything up to and we'll throw an at symbol inside of there. And basically what we want to do is to match the whole way up to the at symbol starting at the beginning of the string up to the at symbol but not including the at symbol. How would we do that? Well, we'll throw our caret inside of here and that is going to match for the beginning of the string. Then we want to have any character that we can think of and that's going to be accomplished with the period symbol. And then we're going to have zero or more of those strings. So we're going to put the asterisks inside of there. And then we do not want the at symbol. So we're going to, inside of square brackets, put a caret and an at symbol. And if we run that, you're going to see that we match everything up to, but we did not get the at symbol, which is exactly what we did not want to get. So that's just one demonstration of how we can match the beginning of a string. And now let's go in and match the end of the string. So in this situation, we're going to come in and we're going to throw an at symbol. And specifically what we want to get is this string right here, get this string. So we want to ignore the at symbol as well as the space and just grab this guy right here. Get this string. How can we do so? Well, we're going to use the dollar sign in this situation. So basically what we want to ignore is the at symbol and we want to also ignore the space at the very beginning right there. We then want to grab everything that lies after those things we want to ignore and then we want to grab everything up until the end of the string and that's where the dollar sign comes in and if we run it you're gonna see that we get the string that we wanted to get and we ignored the at and the space that preceded it there's also going to be another nice little tool which is a multi-line code and let's come in here and I'll do a little bit more of a complicated example here so let's go and do a multi-line string and with this guy what we want to say is we're gonna put ape is big and on the next line we'll say turtle is slow cheetah is fast and what we want to do here is we want to grab the first word of each line and we're going to need a new little tool that's called the multi-line code which is going to allow for the targeting of each line after a line break with the caret symbol that we saw previously and that special code we're going to throw it inside of here is going to be parentheses followed by a question mark and an M. Once again, this is going to allow us to target each line in this individual multi-line string with a caret symbol. Okay, that's what that guy does for us. And we want to grab the first word of each line. So what we need to do then is start out at the beginning of the string. We're then wanting to want to grab everything. We do not, however, want to be greedy and grab the biggest match possible. So we're going to put our question mark inside of there and we're going to grab everything up to a space. And if we run that, you're going to see we got the results that we wanted. We got three results and we got ape and turtle and cheetah. All right, so there's a demonstration of the multi-line code that's going to allow us to use the caret symbols on multi-line strings. And now let's jump in and talk about sub-expressions, which we've already looked at briefly. 
Now sub-expressions are going to be part of a larger expression. So for example, let's say we wanted to match for a large block, but we only want to return part of it. Like I said, we showed that previously. What we're going to do is we are going to surround what we do want with parentheses. So let's say we have a string that's going to be my number is 412-555-1212. And what we want to specifically grab is this part of the telephone number and we want to ignore everything else. How do we do that? Well, we jump in here, get rid of that. And we're going to say specifically what we are looking for is 412 dash and then inside of here we're going to define what we want which is basically everything else that follows and that's just how simple it is and if we run it you're going to see we got one match and we grabbed specifically what we wanted and we ignored the 412 which was needed so that we could skip over all this garbage and not get any of that so we were able to use it so that we could find the position where we wanted to start but then we only needed to return the part that we wanted so pretty cool stuff so now based off of that new knowledge that you gained, let's go and let's try a new problem. All right, so what I want you to do this time is I'm going to throw a whole bunch of telephone numbers inside of here. Let's go throw another one inside of here. Okay, so we have all of these different telephone numbers inside of here. And what I want you to do is to just get the numbers minus the area codes from that string. And you can pause your video and give it a go. Otherwise, I'm going to show you exactly how to solve it or how to create the regular expression that is going to match for it. Okay, so basically what are we targeting? Well, we're targeting any 412s followed with a dash. However, we only want to get the telephone numbers out of there in this situation. What we can do, of course, we're going to use a sub-expression. We want to match for anything that follows inside of there. However, we do not want to grab this and then continue grabbing all that additional information there afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, and then of course that's going to go out to 8. In this situation, we're going to throw curly brackets inside of here and put an 8 for exactly how many characters we want to get. And that is the end of our regular expression. And if we run it, you're going to see we got precisely exactly what we wanted. And to finish off, I wanted to cover what are called multiple sub-expressions. And what this is going to allow us to do is to grab, let's say we have a, my number is, and then we'll do our, in this example, what I want to grab is this number and have that be one result, and then this number right here and have that be the second result. So to do so, I'm going to use two sub-expressions. So I'm just going to type in precisely what I'm looking for, which is 412 dash, and then I want a whole bunch of different stuff right there, followed by another dash, and then followed by a dot and an asterisk. And that is how easy it's going to be to grab both of those pieces of data as individual pieces of data. And then I'm going to come down here. Let's go and just go down and get rid of this part. And if I want to print out those individual results, we can just go matches, zero, and then throw a zero inside of there to grab the very first match. And then if I want to grab the second match, and of course we could do this with a for loop, I just do that and run it. And you can see that I was able to jump in there and grab the 555 and the 1212 individually. So there you go, guys. That is even more information on regular expressions. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to continue covering them until you are an expert at using regular expressions. And just like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.